Hey, what's up guys? I um, wanted to pop on and share something that I have been talking about this weekend. I've had three of my best friends here in town and we've just done so, we're all kind of growth junkies, love life, love getting everything we possibly can out of life. And so we had a lot of really great, great discussions, great um, growth topics, things that we've learned, sharing those things together. And I just had one with my friend Barton before he left today and I just, I was thinking about it and I just thought it was share worthy. And it's um, a process that I just figured out on my own. And this process is what helped me go from completely eating the standard American diet. Guys, like I used to live off of all the fast food, cheap frozen food, macaroni and cheese, white bread, baked goods, like mac, you know, ramen noodles, chips. <laughs> that was my life for mo most of my adult life and my whole life. And how did I go from that to not even wanting it anymore? Just loving uh, nutrient-dense, rich, organic, pasture-raised, regenerative meat, and just loving it and not even thinking about that stuff. How did I get there? How did I go from 175 pounds at five, six and no muscle to lean and strong. Like how did I make those changes? How did I go from just totally lost and people pleasing and doing what I thought everyone else I should do to forging the path of my dreams? How did I do it? This process right here that I'm gonna share with you tonight. And the first step of this process is it's so easy. Basically in a nutshell is I play pretend in my mind. I do a lot of little mind tricks on myself. And so it's as simple as this. I pretend that I have already made the choice and I feel it. I feel that, so that in my mind, in my pretend mind, I've already made, so let's use food as an example. I've, I ate it, okay? So this is back when I was kind of like in that havesy, halfway there part of getting into healthy eating. So I was like kind of getting better, but I'm still making baked goods on Sundays and eating all the other things. Thank you, thank you, and the congrats on the app. And I'll talk about that app decision too. That at the decision to, she's talking about. I have an app coming. I just announced in the in in iOS and Android. I'm, it's probably should launch in about three months, which is a huge undertaking considering I have no content for it right now. Right. So it's, imagine you're me. It's like, okay, do you want to do a whole new thing you've never done before? You got to like hire a videographer, get a place to film pay a pretty good chunk of change to get your app on the app store, do all these things that are outside of your comfort zone. It's, it's uncomfortable, right? And so how do I, how, why did I make that decision? I get a lot of, a lot of offers, a lot of ways I could take things and it's scary too, right? How did I make that decision? I'll share that in a second. I'm going to go back to the food one. So let's go back to, uh, sort of eating healthy. Not really. And so there would be days that I'm staring down those chocolate chip cookies because I used to make some bomb, chocolate chip cookies. Okay. <laughs> and it's two o'clock on a Monday and I've got leftover chocolate chip cookies from the night before and I'm staring those suckers down. And this is how I started to shift. I would first give myself permission to go either way. That is so important. Full permission. You can have the cookies if you want to. That is really, really important. You're never like limited or stuck. You can always choose. It's always a choice. It's always a conscious choice. So it's like, okay, you can have it if you want it. Do you want it? And so I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, I want 10 of them, you know? And so what I would do is when I was having those kind of difficult moments where I was getting in my mind about it, I would just pretend that I already ate them. So I would literally pretend that I was eating the cookies and it was five minutes after. And I would get into the emotion of that, right? And I'd say, how do you feel now that you've ate them, that you've eaten them? And I would think, oh gosh, I don't like how this feels. And I'm like, okay, so let's pick a different one. So I imagined making a really, really bomb chocolate protein shake. And it was like, you're done with that. How do you feel? I was like, dude, I feel energized. I feel ready to go. I feel like I'm going to even make better decisions with my time afterwards. I'm choosing that one. And it was by locking into the emotion of how I felt after I made this pretend choice. So let's come back to the app thing. This is a new decision. I just signed on this this week, creating this app. It was a big decision. It's a, it's a turn in my business. It's a shift. It's new. It's uncomfortable. Right. And you know why I made this decision is because this is another part of my decision making process. Every day I meditate. It's very rare that I skip meditation because that's where all the juice of my life creation comes from. It's where it's when we are not silent ever, there is not a chance to be able to hear the divine guidance, whatever you believe in, even if it's just your higher self, 
if you that those things that come in that deep wisdom if you're not quiet ever during your day and your brain is getting occupied from a million different things you're not going to hear it maybe every once in a while but we have the opportunity to hear this like deep intuitive guidance every day if we can just be quiet i only meditate for 10 minutes 10 10 minutes <laughs> it's changed my entire life so um, actually I was really, you know, I was feeling like this was a good decision for me. It, it made sense. It felt good in my gut, felt good in my heart, felt good in my mind. And I was actually doing a mindset call with my higher coaching clients. And I, I always do the work myself alongside them. And I was doing this act, activity where you, uh, it was from Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich. It's invisible counselors technique. So you pretend that, um, this is, if you haven't read Think and Grow Rich, you have to read that book. It's one of the most enlightened books I've ever read. It's not just about money. It's like enlightened thinking. It's so good. I've read it three times and picked it, picked at it many times, you know, chapters here and there. It's so good. But one of the techniques that Napoleon Hill started doing is he made this pretend round table and he could pick anybody from the history of time, dead or alive, someone he knows, a famous person, doesn't matter. So for example, if he wanted help figuring out something with business, he might invite, uh, you might invite Richard Branson or Oprah or, you know, some business, Gary V or Tony Robbins or whoever you want. You have them at your round table. So you close your eyes and you pretend that they're all at the round table with you and you're leading this meeting, right? And so you, you take a, an issue that you're facing and you present it to them in your mind and you say like, this is what I'm dealing with. What do you got? Right? And this is like what I do with my higher self, my guides, whatever this force is that's helping me. Thank you. Um, and thank me too. Cause I feel it like it is a round table, <laughs> but I, I asked and I was like, and I asked, what's the ne next best move for me? in my business and it was like do the app and it was there was a huge instruction thing you know that's my private stuff but it was like do this and then this and then this and then this and it was just like yup and the emotion of it was like so clear I was like got it and there's been many other business opportunities that I've had where it feels muddled it just doesn't feel right it's like Ugh, this just is I'm forcing it it makes logical sense it seems like a really good opportunity it's great connections and blah blah blah. but it's just like my gut is like no this it just feels ugh. and when I feel that I know it's not aligned so what I'm always chasing is alignment what is gonna keep me in alignment so whether it's food choices or who I'm spending time with, you can feel when stuff starts getting pulled out of alignment. You just don't feel like yourself, you know? This is not, and it's crazy because as I have the courage to, to say no to the things that are out of alignment and say yes to the things that do feel in alignment, all these synchronicities start coming in. It's just like boom, 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 boom. It's just like the universe is letting me know. It's like, yes, here we go, here we go. You feel that? That's what alignment feels like. It's crazy. You want to get into law of attraction, get into alignment. So whatever's pulling you in your life and you're just like, dude, I don't, this is not me. This is not me. Get hungry for solutions, right? And you know how you find those solutions? <sighs> Big breaths until you get centered and you ask, what should I do about that? And even if you're just talking to yourself, get inside those answers are inside you and I think this is so important right now when we live in the information age where it's like literally you could be like should I break up with my boyfriend <laughs> you know what I mean like it's like so much information from everywhere and you know who has the most access to not only information all the information at play but also wisdom is you inside of you and your spirit guides or God or whatever you believe in like that's the best place to get answers I have my clients do this all the time I'm like assignments often, or I want you to tap in this week and ask your body what it needs. So every time you go to eat, just think for a second, like, what do you need body and choose accordingly? We are, we, our intuition, we've been so cut off from it for so long. It's, it causes us to feel scattered and disempowered and all over the place. And when we can just start asking from in here, oh man, that alignment comes so fast. Uh, Wendy says going with the flow instead of swimming against the current. Yes. Yes. A friend of mine, um, shared this vision with me that he had one time. I love it. And I hope he doesn't mind me sharing. Um, he had this kind of vision of him, like going down this, this river 
and it was kind of like fast <laughs> and he was going down on his back and all of these people were on the side of the river and they were like holding they were like in like sticks and leaves and thorn bushes things and they're like holding on for safety because they didn't want to fall fall into this rushing river and he was like this is freaking awesome like you guys should really let go you should really let go. It's awesome. And they were like, no, no, we're too scared to let go. We have to control this situation. And he's like, okay. And I love that. It reminds me of the surrender experiment um, from Michael Singer. If you haven't read that book, it's really good. It's like, let go and also trust. And, and remember that you have a seat at the table. I think sometimes we get scared of surrender because we think that means I'm out of control. No, it doesn't. You're when I, to me surrender is I'm listening for alignment and it's also going to feel aligned with me. It's not like I'm just doing all these things that I'm like I don't even want to do this. It doesn't make any sense. That's not how surrender aligned surrender is. Aligned surrender is this makes sense and this feels good and I don't really know what's coming next and I'm kind of scared but I know this is the right way. Right? That's that's it right there. And get into the energy of it. Um one of my visions is to have a retreat center, have a, to live in my retreat center. And I get in the energy of that all the time. And I hope I'm talking about this now and years down the road, you guys see me in that place. And you're gonna be like, damn, dude, she's been talking about that for a long time because I know it's coming because it's aligned and I live in it. In my mind, I live in that house. I know what it looks like. I imagine myself going out into the garage and getting into my car, <laughs> you know, and I did that with my body when I got fit. I was in the gym guys like I don't know most of you like I don't I wish I had pictures honestly of me in the gym when I first started but just imagine a stay-at-home mom who's 40 pounds overweight and does not even have regular like like cool gym clothes I had like t-shirts and my ex-husband's free shorts from <laughs> the school he worked at you know what I mean like it was like that's what I was wearing and it didn't matter. I was in that gym and I would, I was like, no, that's, uh, that's not what, in my mind, I was super fit. And I was like, it's coming. I know it's coming. It was the same exact energy that I have that with that retreat center vision. It's like, oh, I know where I'm going. I know it's coming. It's just a matter of time. Just close in the gap. And something that I did often was I was like, what does she do today? She goes to the gym. What does she do when she gets home? She has a protein shake. Okay. What does she do tonight? She goes to bed and gets some sleep. Okay, cool. I'm doing, I am her. So that's, I already lived like the fit version of me way before I looked fit. Does that make sense? So you might hear me say sometimes I'll say that results are never a surprise. Not really. I mean, sometimes they are, but for like, it's in changing your body. I knew it was coming. It wasn't like, oh, I just, I don't know. I just kept eating brownies and pizza all the time. <laughs> it's crazy. I just lost 40 pounds. No. I knew I was already living the fit life before I actually had the results. So when the results came, it was like, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Cause I've been doing this for a while now. You know what I mean? So like attach into that energy and become it is that's, it's so big. That has been so big on like forging my path and changing my life and like living in alignment. So excited to see me in my retreat center. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah. And that's been a thing that I've had to, balance uh I'm real good at driving right like I can like well I mean I'm not really that I'm okay I'm an okay driver I'm talking about I'm really good at like I can freaking go right <laughs> like I've got endurance I've got stamina I've got beast mode like I can could force things but I have learned not to so with the retreat center like I am following alignment I keep hearing do some retreats first before you do build a retreat center because you're gonna have a lot of wisdom that comes in that you're going to want to have before you build that thing. So I'm like, okay, okay. Cause at first I was like, I'm going to make this happen this year. <laughs> and it was like, mm. and that's, that comes from me listening. Right. And I, it, the more I listen to my intuition, the better my life just keeps getting. So like whatever issue you're facing, whether that's your health or stuff with your relationships or your, um, finances, your career, ask, go inside get quiet, meditate and say like, what do I need to know? I do all the time with my body. I'm like, what do you need? And I'll hear, I told you guys, I think on another live, I hear weird things like B vitamins. I'm like, okay, start taking them. I start feeling awesome. I'm like, I haven't been taking those in a minute. Thank you body for letting me know. I believe that our intuition is the greatest treasure we have in terms of living the life of our dreams. 
And so often we ignore it because we're worried about what other people are going to think. And that is so sad. So that's my message is just go inside and ask. And when you hear those messages of what you need to do to be in alignment, be brave, be courageous, listen to it. And like, once you start doing that and good stuff starts happening in your life as a result, you start to trust it because it gives a track record, right? You're like, I like that voice. That voice gets me real aligned, <laughs> you know? And when we, we disempower ourselves by thinking everybody else knows better than us, nobody knows better for you than you. They may have counsel. They may have walked a similar road that you're trying to walk. They might have some great new insights to share with you that it's like, wow, I didn't, I, I never thought about that. That's interesting. That might be really valuable to you, but when it comes down to it at the end of the day, your intuition trumps all. And the way I like to describe the difference between, uh, this is in my level up mindset month one, so it's real fresh because I'm doing a challenge uh, with that one right now and I just taught this um, two days ago, no, yesterday, um, is the difference between our mind and our heart and our gut so they're all so important for decision making. I'm gonna turn this on, it's getting dark. Hi. So um, our mind is this amazing processor. It's very analytical and it's super helpful, but our mind can take us into a million different solutions, right? And our heart is our emotional center and it can take us to a bunch of different feelings. You could feel one way about it at two o'clock and at 2.15 you're feeling a totally different way about it, but your gut, it's just, it's just one answer. It's just a knowing. It's just, you just freaking know. You just freaking know. And I love this quote from uh, Sherlock Holmes. And it's something along the lines of the intuition is um, too many data points, pro so many data points that are processed so fast that our conscious minds can't keep up. <laughs> so that deep inner knowing, trust it, ask go for it. Listen. And then once you, you know, are in the moment of making a decision, I really recommend trying this path of pretending you already made the choice and see how you feel. It's so helpful. I do it all the time. And it's like, it's obvious. And sometimes you might want to go 10 years down the road, right? Am I, you know, like, how do I feel? Imagine my life going on that trajectory or imagine my life going on that. Tra oh my God. It's definitely that one. Right. It's so helpful. Yeah, be the observer, Viking Mama. Yeah, and that's the last thing I'll add is like when you become the observer of your own thoughts, a lot of self-compassion comes in, right? Instead of this judgment of, oh, don't be like that and this very hard push myself down habit that so many of us have, it changes into, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why I do that. And then you actually grow. <laughs> you know, I say the compassion is key to growth and being an observer and being able to extract yourself from your life and just kind of observe it and be like, Oh, it's interesting. What would I recommend somebody else do? Or what would I see in somebody else that they were doing what I'm doing? You know, what counsel would I give them? I think it to ourselves. <laughs> so helpful. And that's why, I mean, really at the end of the day, meditation is the thing that gets you all of this stuff because you learn how to let go of your stressful thoughts and withdraw yourself out of them and observe everything. You get this like super high level view of your life and you also learn how to receive. I can't tell you how many, how many, how many of you in the personal growth world here, people say, oh, I'm really good at giving, but I suck at receiving. I'm like, do you? Because to me, if, if do you, I'm like, do you meditate? Because that is the ultimate in receiving. Napoleon Hill talks about the mind being a transmitter and a receiver. So when we go blank like that, we open ourselves up to be able to receive. Very, very enlightened thoughts. Very, very intuitive, connected thoughts that actually benefit not only us, but the rest of the world is how I see it. And we have the take brave, courageous action to listen to it. Like maybe it's like, you need to write a book about that. You need to start a podcast about that. You need to go help special needs people, like whatever it is. And you're like, okay. And you get out of your, out of the way thinking it's about you. Cause it's not about you. It's about serving. <laughs> then you like, look what happens in the world. Goodness, you know, 
last thing on that I'll say is um, Scott Duffy, a mentor of mine, amazing speaker, amazing entrepreneur. He has an incredible track record. Started working for Tony Robbins way back in his 20s and his 50s now. I sold a company to Richard Branson. Scott's just amazing. I'm in his mastermind. And he, he says that uh, nervousness is the ultimate form of selfishness. Because when you're nervous, like he's talking about speaking on stage, when you're nervous, you're only thinking about you. So quit thinking about you and get out of the way and go serve. And those are lessons I've learned in medicine journeys too. Peyote taught me that one hard. It was like, this is not about you. We need a lot of help. If it's about you, go. go. But if you want to help, roll up your sleeves and get to work. <laughs> so just relaying that on because it was like, it was, it was kind of brutal but beautiful at the same time. It was like, it's not about us. Like serving and living in our purpose is not, it, it, it's beautiful for us. It's a wonderful place to be. It's very fulfilling, but it's also not really about us, you know? And so it's like a win-win. Wendy, love everything you shared. I need more of you speaking into my life and heart. Oh, thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. That's so nice. All right. I'll wrap it up. Thank you all for joining me. Hope you guys are having a wonderful, what is it? Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> all right.